we're here today in the studio with Ryan Irvine of Keystone Financial. Ryan, thanks again for joining us. It's great to be back. Well, a couple picks that you want to talk about today that uh -huh. are decidedly untrendy. Yes, but we you know love to be when untrendy. it's exactly, but when it's up almost four hundred percent in uh, in twenty eighteen, that's not a bad thing yeah. necessarily. Um, Expel Inc. trades on the uh, venture exchange DAP. DAP uh, dot U. So dot U, dot U yeah. means it trades in U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of unique in that respect. Um, boring business. Mm -hmm. What do they do? They ha have automotive film. Mm -hmm. That that's what they they sell essentially. That and window tinting. So you know that those that film you put on a car to prevent those annoying scratches and dings you get from rock chips or, or rocks filling up in that mm -hmm. chip on your on your automobile. Mm -hmm. Tremendous growth in the underlying business. That's what's driven the results. So we when we saw this company uh, originally when we've been monitoring it for four years we always liked the business it wasn't effectively priced and we didn't like the margins mm -hmm. now margins have picked up tremendously over the past uh, 12 months that's what's driven the stock in the last quarter uh, they had 65 percent growth in revenues to just 30 million in that range uh, eight cents in earnings up from around two cents in the same period last year so a four-fold increase that's driving the stock price going forward. We love to see a company that is driven by underlying earnings because then we can value it. Mm -hmm. So you know, it came out with Q1 earnings this year. It was trading about the dollar fifty range, and it jumped to you know just under three dollars. Now we recommended buying it again at that point because mm -hmm. it was actually now this is a hard concept to go into, but it was actually cheaper on an earnings per share basis, cash flow going forward basis having doubled because of how tremendously profitable that quarter was. So okay. we think it's a good business. We think there's growth going forward. Uh, it's trading around the $6 range in that range. I think it still offers value here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's had a tremendous run already this year. But you know, if, if we just give it a conservative 15 times multiple of what we think the next year's earnings will be, we think there's an $8 valuation there. Mm -hmm. So that's still a significant lift from where you are right now. And what about Sangoma Technologies? Um, what yeah. is it about that company? Again, trades on the TSXV, um, STC yeah. stock symbol. Yeah, it's Tell a unified communications company. Uh, they just made a transformational type acquisition of a company called Digium, which uh, owns the Asterix open source pro, uh, platform. Now, uh, what we like is the growth going forward. This company has done smart acquisitions. It's difficult to do a you know, growth by acquisition story, but this company has done it accretively over time. They made this their biggest acquisition just in the last uh, several months. Now, going forward next year, we expect a 50% lift in terms of EBITDA up to the nine to $10 million range. So that's a tremendous growth in terms of uh, EBITDA. It'll hit 100 million in revenues this year. So it's a sleepy little company that's gonna do 100 million in revenue. And you know it's trading at relatively reasonable valuations. We think right now it's probably worth you know a dollar sixty, and it's trading a dollar twenty in that range. Mm -hmm. So again, that's a good lift from here. And if management can continue to grow operations, they think we're going to see an uptick in margins uh, the following year. If it can do that, then the company's positioned well. It's growth at a reasonable price, and mm -hmm. we'll hold it. Uh, we've been holding it for two years now, and we'll continue to hold it going forward. Okay. Well, Ryan, as we as we wrap up here, what's on your radar for 2019? Going into 2019, what should we look? Yeah, at? I mean, I would. You know, we're always looking at every company in Canada, mm. looking for great value, and and really, we don't have a theme right now that we're looking at. We do like, if there is going to be a downturn, you know, the, I mean, we've been told for about five years there's probably a downturn coming. There always is a downturn mm. coming. Um, we'd like to own companies that. I mean, they say you could go to cash. We like to go to companies with cash or net cash positions on their balance sheet because those type of companies, if you have a downturn, they can go out there and buy assets when they come on sale. So that's why a lot of the companies that we look at have strong net cash positions limited to no debt, particularly within the small cap area. Mm -hmm. So we'd be looking to buy companies that are cash rich, and we have a report coming out on that just uh, in the next three weeks. So it's our cash rich, profitable, small cap report. Mm -hmm. uh, profiles about 70 companies in, co in Canada that have net cash positions, smaller companies, all profitable. And we make two or three new recommendations out of that. That's what we'll focus on going forward. If there is a downturn, we want to own businesses that have great balance sheets that can withstand, but not only withstand a, a crisis or any type of downturn, not necessarily a crisis, but a downturn, mm -hmm. but they can profit from it by buying businesses that are on sale. Okay. okay. Well, there you go. Another few picks from Ryan Irvine. Ryan, thanks. It's always a pleasure Thank you. having you here. Thank you.